So, on to chapter 14. Um, 14, which hopefully you read in the book, is about linear to linear functions, which basically means a line like this on top of another line. Um, and they'll always look like 1 over x. Um, and 1 over x looks like something like this. It always is a curves down, always has asymptotes, it always gets closer and closer to something here and closer and closer to something up here. Um, just weird, it seems because it's one of an x over an x, but it'll always end up looking like that. But there'll be two of them, and so that's what we'll talk about here. In other words, okay, what do I mean there'll be two of them? Shouldn't have erased that. If one of them's over here, the other one is over there. And so the graphs will always look something like that. Um, and so just drawing a rough graph like that is not hard. You'll get lots of practice. Um, it's really quick once you know how to do it. And so we'll go over that with an example. So 14.1b looks like this. Um, this whole chapter is about writing linear to linear functions and they have it like this. You have ax plus b divided by x plus c with nothing in front of the x down here because that makes it easier. So we have a 2 in front of it so we need to get rid of that 2 which is easy. We just divide everything by 2. And then we can make it look like this, and then we can say some things about it. So that's the first step. So let's divide everything here by 2. So, and then the question is, do we keep fractions or decimals? Um, and let's do decimals here. 3 divided by 2 is 1.5. So you have 1.5x. 2 divided by 2 is 1. 2x divided by 2 is just x. That's why we did it. Minus 5 divided by 2 is 2.5. Okay. That's the first step. Now, here's how you figure this out if you forget and don't have to look in the book in the summary, which is really good. You should always look at the summaries at the end of the chapter. That helps you out. But when x gets really big, let's say x is a million. When x is a million, this is like 1.5 million, this is a million. 1 and 2.5 are negligible. They don't count anymore. So, But the 1.5 does because basically you have 1.5 million divided by a million and you get 1.5. So the point is when x gets really big or when x goes to infinity, this thing goes to a, goes to 1.5, it goes to 1.5. So a then is what's called the horizontal asymptote because as you go really, really far to the right, as x gets big, the function approaches a. It can never get there, it'll never get to 1.5. But the bigger x gets, the closer it gets to 1.5 because 1 and negative 2.5 just don't matter anymore. Okay? Now, this blows up when x equals 2.5. So when you get 0 in the bottom, that's when this blows up. So this letter here, which is c, so negative c, so 2.5 in this case, right? Because when x is 2.5, 2.5 is 2.5 is 0. That is the vertical asymptote because it goes to infinity asymptote because this goes to infinity then because dividing by zero is undefined or basically gets infinitely big, right? So the vertical asymptote, it goes up to infinity at 2.5. Um, now the zeros are easy. Um, when does, when x is zero, let's look at this formula here. When x is zero, y is just b over c. So when x is 0, that's, the, that's where it crosses the y-axis, um, so the y-intercept. So the y-intercept, where it intercepts the y-axis, that's when x equals 0. You just plug in this formula, and it's just clearly b over c. That's pretty easy. And the x-intercept, let's see, that's when y is 0, which basically means that's when the top is 0. For the bottom, to get 0 from the bottom, x would have to be infinitely big, right? And we're not... We already went there, that's the asymptote. So for the top, when the top is zero, we get that this function zero. So all we do is set the top zero there. So I'm gonna do that work right here. So ax plus b then is zero. Put the negative b over here. So x is equal to negative b over a. So the x intercept is negative b over a. That's where it crosses the x axis. Those are really easy to figure out, right? You just look at those two numbers um, to figure that out. Okay, so the question here, what they want us to do, and for all of them in part B, is 
so, um, give the domain of each of the following functions. And um, do they say the range too? Give the make domain, sketch a graph, give equations for the asymptotes. Okay, so what's the domain? So basically x can't be 2.5, right? So x can be everything but 2.5. So first off, the domain, and usually they write it like this, x except x can't be not equal to 2.5. That's the domain. Um, okay. <clears throat> <clears throat> um, now, what else do they ask here? Find the x and y intercepts of each function. Okay, x and y intercepts. So here's our thing. So we just figured out, okay, when uh, the y intercept, y intercept is b over c, which is b is this one, c is that one, which is 1 over negative 2.5 which is multiply the top and the bottom, because that's kind of ugly. That's 2 divided by negative 5, so negative 2 fifths, or negative 0.4, however you want to write that. And the x-intercept we just figured out was, what's negative b over a? So negative b is 1, negative 1 divided by 1.5, so negative 1 divided by 1.5. Multiply top and bottom by 2, that's negative 2 over 3, so negative 2 thirds. We're going to use those numbers when we graph it, so actually those are helpful things to know. Um, sketch a graph and indicate any vertical or horizontal asymptotes. Okay, now we're ready to sketch the graph. And you don't have to do a beautiful job of these. It's pretty easy to just get an idea of what it looks like. So here's our graph. Um, first you do the asymptotes, which I didn't say what those were, so let's figure those out. So the asymptotes, again, are just A and negative C. So the horizontal asymptote is A, so A is a horizontal asymptote, so that's equal to A in our equation was 1.5, so that's 1.5, that's a horizontal asymptote. And negative C is the vertical one, that's where it blows up, so 2.5, so negative C equals negative negative 2.5, which equals 2.5, that's the vertical asymptote. And again, we have to know those to graph it. So I, it's not just like more work. I have to know that. Okay. Horizontal 1.5. So I'm going to make my 1.5 maybe about right here. So that's 1.5. Uh, except that horizontal asymptote, I should have put it right here. 1.5. And so I'm going to erase that. Horizontal means it goes to the y-axis at 1.5. Okay. So 1.5. Then I, what you do is you put a dashed line just like this at 1.5. That's our horizontal. Then vertical means up and down. Vertical at 2.5. So if this is 1.5, that would be 1. This would be 2. About 2.5 would be right here. This would be 2.5. And then I'm going to put a dashed line, a vertical dashed line at 2.5. You always need to have those two vertical dashed lines. Now you plot the intercepts. The y-intercept crosses the y-axis at negative 2 fifths. Uh, let's see, that's 0 0.4, if that's 1.5, that's really close, right? Something like that. Don't worry about getting the exact, something like that. It crosses the x-axis, the x-intercept at negative 2 thirds. They're both negative, so negative 2 thirds, so maybe a little bit bigger, right? So again, don't worry about being perfect, something like that. Now, here's why you have to know that, because now we know that when we draw those two things, it's going to look like this. It always looks like this. And it's symmetrical about a line at 45 degrees here. So that's so if, so I'm going to put like a dot like right there about 45 degrees. It's symmetrical about that. So it looks like this. And then we go 45 degrees to the other side, somewhere right about there. And you always run out of room when you do these. But it'll look something like this. The same thing in between these dashed lines. Um, something like that. Okay, there's always one on one side, one on the other side. They're equidistant across 45 degrees. They're symmetrical. And it helps the, the y, the intercepts here, and I should have hit that one, right, that goes through both those dots. The intercepts tell you where to draw it. Do you draw it over here and here, or is it on this side or this side? And the only way to know is to know at least one point, 
And having two points, we already figured them out, so might as well put them on there. It kind of helps you draw this curve. Don't worry about your curve being perfect. Mine are obviously not perfect, but they should be more or less symmetrical, about 45 degrees here. If this one is this far from here, the other one should be about that far, and they should look about the same on both sides. Mine obviously don't. This one's too far away here. This one's closer to the dashed lines, but yeah, whatever. That's what you do. Okay, so that's how you do all of 14.1. If it does not look like this, <clears throat> like this, you got to divide by whatever's in front of the X to make it look like this. Then you can just read off what the different points are, and then you know how to graph it. Um, the problem is here, they only give the answer for A, unfortunately. Um, <clears throat> so I just did B, so C, D, E, E, F, you know, it's they don't have the answers for it. However, However, use Desmos, okay? Desmos is your friend. Use Desmos, because if you graphed it right, you don't need to look at the answer. You just look at your graph, draw a rough graph like this, plug the formula into Desmos, like for, you know, A, or we, they give the answer for A, like for C, plug it into Desmos and see if your graph looks like their graph. Um, it should be really close. Plus, that's kind of fun, right? So you don't need Desmos. You can just, you, don't, you can do it on your own except you need Desmos to check. So that's what I recommend you do to check your answers. Um, the other ones in this chapter now are using using linear to linear functions to model real life situations. Sometimes real life things kind of look like graphs like this, look like that or look like that. So then it's a matter of using our knowledge now about how what this function looks like to model some real life things. So that's what the rest of these examples are for. So, okay, good luck with this. Bye.